Hi guys, it's Sam here today and today we are doing a roundup of all the makeup that I have tried throughout the month of January, kind of the best and worst of what I've tried so far for 2022. If you are interested in that, continue watching. If you are new to my channel, my name is Sam. I'm a makeup enthusiast. Makeup is my therapy and if you feel the same way, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can see more content from me. So let's get started. I am exhausted. I want to start with palettes because I tried a lot of palettes surprisingly in the last month. I am shocked that I've tried so many palettes. Sometimes I feel like I'm not using any makeup at all and then I look and see and I've used a buttload. So let's get started. The first thing I wanted to talk to you guys about in no specific order is the Unearthly Cosmetics Fall Magic Palette. I love this palette. The formula is stunning. I am mad at myself for not trying this brand sooner. It used to be called Alien Cosmetics. So if you've already tried Aliens Cosmetics, man, I'm sad that I wasn't there with you girl in the beginning. Like this is sad, but I'm happy I'm there now. Okay. This is a gorgeous palette and I really, really enjoyed it. The first palette that I actually used this year was this Melt 27 palette and I picked this up on sale when I bought the Mariposa palette back in Black Friday but I didn't use it until January and the mattes are incredible in here but the two shimmer shades are very dry and very dull on the eye. In the beginning of the month I had some dry skin issues and I thought initially it was because of that but no. Nope it's the shadows themselves. So I now understand what everybody was saying, how like Melt Cosmetics has that problem. I probably am going to be a little bit more weary buying from them again, but the mattes in there are stunning and I do love all the tones in there. My most recent purchase was this one from Colourpop. This is the All Amethyst palette and this is the one I'm wearing today. I did film a get ready with me, but it was very chatty. I'm not sure if you're going to want to watch it, but if you do, I'm making this creating this look um, with this palette here. Um, it's okay. It's all right. I don't think it's the best formula from ColourPop. I felt like, like in particular, the shadow right here just was very dull. It didn't have the shine that I expected from it. And the mattes um, took a while to build up. Although it does look nice. I did get a good look out of it. This I got when Natasha Denona did her 20% off sale. I bought two palettes, but the other one I haven't used yet. This is the Natasha Denona Star Palette. This is a really beautiful palette. I'm happy I picked this up. I'm also happy that I got a discount on it. 20% off is a good chunk because I think the original price is like $169 for this. I think this is a beautiful palette. I'm a big fan of Natasha Denona, so I'm a little bit biased, but I didn't have any duds or anything in here. The only one that actually, I'm not going to call it a dud, is just right here this one right here i thought it was going to be a little bit more um sparkly like the, these other shadows but it's more like a metallic but it's very smooth you know i'm 37 so i have a little bit more texture on my lids so i felt like it wasn't as pretty on my eyes um but i don't think that was the the shadows performing poorly it's just the texture of my lids some palettes that were a surprise to me, Colored Rain came out with their botanical collection and I purchased both of the palettes, they're six pan palettes and I did do a video on this if you're interested in seeing. Um, but this is what they look like, beautiful shadows. The shadows are very sparkly and textured like I like. I feel like when I use shadows like that they kind of deceive the eye so you can't really see that I'm 37 you know and the mattes are really beautiful they're highly pigmented they blend nicely I was quite happy with these palettes I would definitely buy from color rain again this was like the first time I tried them and the packaging is so pretty with the roses on there I love it I also want to interrupt the palettes and just talk about some lip products because when I tried the Fall Magic palettes, I also ordered these lippies from the brand in Jeanette and Kaylina. These are beautiful satin liquid lipsticks. 
very comfortable, very creamy, really like even coated when you put it on and the colors and undertones are really unique. So if you're looking for some kind of really interesting shade lipsticks, I would definitely check them out. From Color Rain, I tried their gloss, which is super good. Love this gloss. It's very nice, lightweight, thin with a high shine. Um, and it doesn't bleed at all. And then I tried their satin lipstick. This is in the shade Lotus. Really beautiful, like everyday natural nude for me. Very, very thin formula, lightweight, but pigmented. I really like that as well. Something nobody cared about <laughs> that I tried out of curiosity on Amazon is this Lux Aza. It's cream shadows. So it comes in this box with six different shades and a brush. It's going to all go in the trash. These are horrible. I thought, you know, oh, it'll be, wouldn't this be interesting if these turn out to be really good cream shadows? And they feel very strange, like very thin and they're not very creamy. They're almost like, like a thin balm and they don't blend very well. I just don't No, These are not good. These are not no bueno, no bueno. This was a palette that I tried. I, it was like an add on I got on an Ipsy bag from IBY beauty. It's the ocean awakening palette. The mattes in here are really nice. The shimmers are okay. They're very basic, but I do like how bright and colorful it is. I did a look using uh, this blue and another look with this orange. Those were the colors that really attracted me to the palette anyway, and I thought it was quite nice. Again, the, sh the shimmers in here are very basic. Um, they're not special like the colored rain ones or like the um, Unearthly Cosmetics. I also... <laughs> Finally, I bought this on a Christmas sale in 2020 and I finally used it. It's the Lime Crime Greatest Hits Bangers palette. The mattes in here are really, really good and the shimmers were okay. They're better than the Ocean Awakening palette, but they're not quite there um, to what I like from like indie brands or like Natasha Denona or anything like that. But the mattes are really stunning and I, I like these like unique shades right there you know what i mean and they were like really easy to blend workable another indie brand palette was the isabel cosmetics dawn of fall palette i did a video using this and this next palette that i was going to talk about anyway um the viseart atoll paris paris atoll palette what well, this one was really good. The only thing is like, these are like shimmer dual chromes. They're really, really good. But the shades that were like multi chromes, they get like hard pan. And I just don't love that. They're also not as metallic as I thought that they were going to be. But the shimmers are really beautiful. Like these um, more like flaky ones are like, exactly what I love so overall it's still a really good palette I don't regret buying it um it's just a note that if you're like super into multi chromes the multi chromes in this one are not like my favorite I would still go to like Terra Moons or something like that this little Viseart Paris Atoll palette, super, super cute. I tried Viseart at the end of last year and fell in love with the palette that I used. It's like the colorful one. I can't remember the name of it. But anyway, I have a video of it. I'll link it down below. But this was gorgeous. The mattes are really, really easy to blend. I think these palettes are super cute, easy to travel. They just look adorable. The packaging is so freaking cute on them. I like love their whole, I love the whole vibe. <laughs> this makes me sad. The BH Cosmetics. I bought a bunch of stuff because they were having a major sale and then we found out that they're filing bankruptcy. Hopefully they're not gone forever, but I picked up the 
Amethyst Palette Seeing Visions, the nightshade, what do they call this? Kiss to Kill, and the Do Not Disturb Palette. Beautiful, beautiful palettes, gorgeous formula, like everything you learn to love and expect from BH Cosmetics in the past two years. Now we're getting into some, some bougie-ish makeup. We have the Pat McGrath um, Mothership Diamond of the First Water Palette and the Blush Trio. Absolutely stunning. These are really, really beautiful palettes. Well, I don't know. Let me just say, these two pink shades, I wasn't flipping off, um, that are like these baked, baked matte formula, matte satin formulas, they're okay. They're not my favorite. They're pretty good. Like, they're good. They work. Um, but they're not my favorite formula. But I love the color story. I love that special shade right here. And... I can't hold a palette for the life of me. Yeah, the rest of the palette is really, really unique and beautiful. And then I felt like the trio was absolutely stunning. Like I loved all these shades on my complexion and I'm really happy to have that highlighter that's included in there. Another thing I got last year on like one of the Sephora sales, but I really got to like use it a lot this month is the Pat McGrath under eye powder in the shade yellow. I really like this powder. Do I think it blows any other powder under, you know, out of the water? No. I think it's really good, but I feel like, you know, I have, I feel like even like the Essence um, Banana Powder is really good too. Like, I don't think this is like more special than that, if that makes any sense. Natasha Denona had released her uh, Rose Cheek Duo here. Not my favorite. I like the highlight in there. The blush I'm not crazy about. And then their little mini Biba palette. This is okay. Um, the first time I used it, I did film a first impressions. And I was like, mm, a little unsure about the mattes because I got a little bit of fallout. I used it twice since then. And I haven't had the fallout issue that I had the first time. But I just feel like this color story is just not my favorite. It's pretty, but it's so neutral that it's just like... It's a little bit of a yawn for me, if I'm being, like, completely honest with myself. I also bought a bunch of shit at the end of the year from ColourPop. I bought, like, the It's Hue vault and all these little mini pan palettes. The only one that I've gotten to play with is this one right here. This is the An Emerald Away palette. Super beautiful. Love the quality of, of this palette here. I like these little quads so much they are phenomenal if you're interested in any of that stuff i would definitely pick it up a highlighter from ColourPop that i got for christmas which is the rudolph one it's a little too sparkly for my taste so it feels like a little chunky and dry um it's not my favorite i've been playing with a ton of stuff from lys i pretty much i got the foundation the serum primer a bronzer a blush a highlight and the powder the powder i like this powder better than i like the pat mcgrath one um i hate that the packaging all looks the same i got the powder in resilience which is the translucent one i love this powder it gets a lot of product the pricing is good the primer i like it better than the milk hydro grip everybody loves the hydro grip i think this is better it's thinner lighter weight and just more comfortable on the skin it doesn't feel like a thick tacky base like the hydro grip does i love this foundation i got it in the shade tg5 and it's literally my perfect shade the highlighter is the only thing that i was kind of mm, about it's pretty, but it has too much glitter for me. It's a little too sparkly. I'll keep it because it's not the worst. I have more sparkly ones than this, but it's just like not my favorite formula. The cream blush I got in, in Empower. It's pretty. It's a unique formula to my collection. Do I feel like I'm going to reach 
um like for this over my tower 28 probably not but it's definitely up there in my cream collection and then the bronzer i got it in the shade courage i really like this shade it's very neutral and kind of olivey which works really good for my current skin tone it's a little hard pressed and takes a while to build up but i guess that's really good if you're not heavy handed i just like to do it real fast so sometimes i want it to be a little bit creamier and less pressed but it's not a bad um bronzer whatsoever i don't know did i mention these um i might have not mentioned these i don't know if i did i'll cut this out um the maybelline active wear foundation i'm wearing it right now it's not horrible i don't love a matte foundation it is lightweight and i would say it's more medium coverage not my favorite and then the concealer that goes with it it's doesn't have enough coverage for me it is very lightweight and comfortable i would say that but as far as covering my under eyes i can still see them so this is not for me some more bougie stuff we got the pat mcgrath highlighters i have lunar nude which is the one that came out for christmas i have what's this one extreme gold which is part of the bridgerton collection and incandescent gold number two which is also part of the um, bridgerton collection all of these are the same formula absolutely stunning worth every penny <laughs> worth every penny love them and then lastly we're going to talk about chanel all right so i bought the two luminous blushes from their spring summer collection in I think one's called Pesci Rose. This one is like the peachy shade. Absolutely stunning. It has like a gorgeous like blur effect to the skin that I absolutely love. They look really good on their own and they look especially nice mixed together. This is the Brun Rossi. Um, I love them. They are absolutely stunning. Worth every penny that I spent on them. I've never bought Chanel um, blushes before and I'm so happy with the quality, like so happy with the quality. I also got two lipsticks. I purchased one and they sent me the wrong one and then they sent me the correct one. So the one that they sent me that was wrong was this Rouge Coco and Tendrous. It's like a pink shade. It's, I don't wear pink lipstick, so that's why I was like, oh, I didn't want to complain, but I'm like, I did really want the other one. <laughs> so it's beautiful. It looks really nice on my complexion. It's not my favorite shade. The formula is really nice and comfortable. So if you do like this formula or you're interested in it, I wouldn't say, um, I would definitely say check it out. Just, you know, find a shade you like. And then the lipstick that I intended on getting was the... I think they call it the this is a Lure Velvet in Terre de Tolls. All right, I don't know where it caught out because my memory card filled up, but we're just gonna try to finish this up. So the last thing is the Chanel lipstick, and I love this. I'm gonna link the video that I tried all these products down below so you can check it out. But it's a beautiful shade on me. The formula is very comfortable. I actually prefer this over the Natasha Denona lipsticks. Um, I've learned over time that I really don't love that formula from Natasha Denona. That's probably the one thing that I'm not crazy about from her line is her lipsticks. But that is everything that I tried this month. It was a buttload of products. Thank you so much for hanging out this long. Um, and until next time, I love you guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.